Welcome to my YouTube channel, Marie's Country Life. Hello friends, today I'm going to show you how you can grow fresh microgreens or sprouts year-round. Sprouts are rich in vitamins and minerals, essential for our health. That's why sprouts are called the greens superfoods. First, it is important to choose carefully the seeds you want to sprout. Make sure that the seeds are not stale or really old. The newer the seeds, the higher the germination rate. Make sure that you remove some unusual shaped or bad seeds as they can rot and mold, causing sprout spoilage. I'm going to show you here an easy and step-by-step -step instructions on how to grow mung beans, lentils, and alfalfa. Some salad mix seeds, it's a mixture of alfalfa, radish, and broccoli seeds. I'm not really sure about the age of this salad mix as I think I have this for a while. But since I found this pack, I'll try to grow this anyway, just so you'll have a comparison between high germinating seeds and seeds with low to zero germination rate. In these bowls, I have half a cup of lentils, half a cup of mung beans, pour some water, and soak the beans or legumes for 10 to 12 hours or overnight. Make sure that all the seeds are submerged in water and not floating. As for sprouting containers, there are many to choose from. You can buy really nice sprouting containers, but you can also make your own. I use a combination of canning jars, store-bought sprouters, and any containers that I can use for sprouting bigger seeds. I use either regular mouth jars or wide mouth jars for sprouting microgreens. But only wide mouth jars have available and compatible sprouter lids in the market. So what I do is make my own lid for the regular mouth jars that I use as sprouting containers. For every jar, I put 2 teaspoons of alfalfa seeds and 2 teaspoons of salad mix seeds between 2 to 3 teaspoons or 1 tablespoon maximum so there is room inside for air circulation and seed growth. After putting the seeds inside the jars, fill it with clean, non-chlorinated water. Again, only use non-chlorinated water. You can also use well water, spring water, or distilled water. About half a jar of water. Let the seeds soak in water overnight or between 10 to 12 hours. Soaking the seeds in water helps soften the skin and the germ, and it makes the seeds germinate faster. This is how they look like after the overnight soaking. The water looks colored from the beans. Here's the soaked lentils, mung beans, the alfalfa seeds, and the salad mix seeds. After the overnight soaking, it's time to rinse and drain the soaked seeds. Make sure that you rinse the beans several times until the water is clear. You can use the flowing water for rinsing and a colander to catch bigger seeds or a strainer for small seeds. If you notice some unusual shaped or discolored beans or seeds after being soaked and while you are washing, remove them because the likelihood of those seeds to germinate is low. Here is the soaked salad mix seeds. As you can see, the soaked seeds in the jar is not hard to rinse and drain. Again, make sure that you rinse the seeds several times until the water becomes clear. You can also use the canning jar sprouter lid as a strainer for draining the water. Just screw it on the jar and tip the jar sideways to allow the water to flow out and drain. This sprouter lid is available in some stores or online. Shake the jar vigorously, tapping the jar to spread the seeds evenly at the bottom of the jar in a sideways or tipping position. Or you can also open the jar and just use a fork or a skewer to spread the seeds evenly. Just make sure that you screw the lid back on. Here is another kind of sprouting jar lid. If you don't have a store-bought lid, you can make your own. Basically, it's a wire mesh cut into shape to fit on a regular wide mouth canning jar. It works perfectly fine. Just make sure that the holes of the repurposed wire mesh are not too big to keep the seeds in the jar as you drain out some water during rinsing. So I use several types of sprouter. I have a stackable sprouter, single layer sprouter, canning jar sprouter, and a Sprout Master brand. Make sure that you clean the sprouter containers before and after using. 
An easy way to spread the soaked seeds into the sprouter is by filling some water into the container where you soak the seeds. With gentle shaking motion, dump the water with the seeds into the sprouter. You can also use your fingers to spread the seeds evenly. Since the 5x6 Sprout Master has two compartments, I put the alfalfa in one side and the salad blend on the other side. This is how it should look when seeds are in the sprouter. The alfalfa and the salad mix seeds are ready for sprouting. Make sure that after rinsing, you place the sprouter on a plate on a slightly tipped position to drain out excess water and for air circulation. Place a cover or a lid to keep moisture in while the seeds are in sprouting stage. Here is another single layer sprouter that I have. It's an 8x10 sprouter. This is what I use for sprouting smaller amounts of mung beans, seeds, and other legumes. But usually, I use a regular basin for sprouting mung beans as it can hold more beans. Mung beans are very quick and easy to sprout. If you use a basin, you'll have to use a wet towel to cover the beans to keep it moist. Wash and clean the sprouter with just plain water and brush, no soap needed, and put the soaked lentils afterwards. And just like the smaller seeds you want to sprout, you can just dump into the sprouter with water for easy spreading. Bigger seeds are a lot easier to spread evenly because they won't stick to your fingers when you try to move them around. Next step is put the mung beans on the other half of the sprouter. Again, make sure that you rinse the mung beans several times until the water is clear. It is easier to rinse as you dump the soaked beans into the sprouter because the sprouter itself serves as a strainer and water drains out easily as you pour it in. The sprouter has been filled. This is how it should look like. If you use a store-bought sprouter, it comes with a bottom saucer to catch any excess water. It also comes with a lid to keep the sprouting seeds from drying out. If you are using a DIY sprouter, make sure that there is a way to drain water efficiently during the watering. As for the cover, you can use clean, wet washcloth or towels to keep seeds from drying out too fast. On this one, I use a regular mouth canning jar. This jar doesn't have a fitting sprouter lid. So what I usually do is make an instant lid using an aluminum foil and a rubber band. What I do is cut out about 4 by 4 inch square of aluminum foil, place it over the jar opening, and with the use of a rubber band to keep the foil in place. I use a pointy or a sharp tool like a pencil or a pen to make tiny holes on the aluminum foil. These holes are important for drainage and to help with air circulation. But make sure that the holes are not too big that seeds could wash out during rinsing. This is my lazy way of creating an instant cover. But hey, it works! I just need a plate or a saucer to sit this jar on a tipped or a slanted position for better air circulation and draining. Or you can buy or make your own jar sprouter holder. It helps keep the jar on a leaning position and it is more secured. The store-bought jar sprouter holder is adjustable. You can easily adjust it according to the height or the angle of the jar you want it to be. As you can see, any excess water drains out of the jar and that's how it should be so water doesn't sit in the jar as it can cause the seeds to rot. Now the waiting time begins. Having different seed sizes and varieties as well as sprouting time intervals ensure different batches of microgreen productions instead of having the same kind sprouting all at once. It is important to rinse the seeds and drain excess water every day. You can rinse the germinating seeds gently in the jars. You can do this in the first two to three days when there are no visible leaves yet. Make sure that you drain out any excess water. Keep the germinating seeds away from direct and intense heat as the seeds may dry up quicker. You can place them near a window so they can get some indirect sunlight, but keep the sprouter covered until all the leaves are out. The advantage of glass jar sprouter is that seeds germinate faster as it retains moisture and heat better than any tainted plastic sprouters. Having a room temperature above 60 degrees Fahrenheit helps the seeds germinate faster. This is what germinated alfalfas look like on the second day of being in sprouting jars. You can see tiny white roots and green leaves. Meanwhile, 
I notice that the salad mix seeds show no changes at all. This is a proof that old and stale seeds have weak or no germinating power left. Here are the mung beans and the lentil seeds. Noticeably, the mung beans already sprouted, but the lentils show very little sign of progress. As I said earlier, mung beans is one of the quickest and easiest beans to sprout. So if you want to try sprouting, consider sprouting different seed varieties and sizes so you'll get different harvest at varying times and days. Up close you can see here the alfalfa with high germination rate. You can see roots and some tiny leaves. Compared to the salad mix that show very little progress, I only see a few germinated seeds. Clearly, these salad mix seeds are old and like the alfalfa seeds. When you do sprouting, it is important to check the microplants and water them every day, at least once or twice a day. Again, make sure that you drain any excess water to avoid rotting and foul odor. When the roots and leaves are out, spray bottle comes very handy. I use spray bottle a lot. If you have no spray bottle, you can pour and sprinkle water gently on the microgreens so as not to damage the tiny plants. Be generous in your watering until you see clear water coming out of the drain. Sprouting takes time and effort. It's like having an indoor garden because it is. It's a clean kind of gardening without the use of soil. Sprouting relies on seeds' potency and capability to produce roots and leaves using the seeds' rich and dense nutrients. When we eat microgreens, we also get the rich and potent nutrients and minerals that microgreens have. This is day 3 of sprouting. The mung bean sprouts are ready to eat. They have reached the length worthy of consumption. <laughs> yeah, really. They are already an inch long. Meanwhile, the lentils are showing more and more white roots. But still, a lot shorter compared to mung beans. It's nice to see the sprouts progress in comparison. Meanwhile, the alfalfa sprouts are growing taller and greener. But the salad mix blend are looking sorry and pathetic. There are no more signs of new growth and progress. It's a letdown for sure. Time to get rid of that seed packet. The microgreens in the jars are looking vibrant and green. I enjoy staring at them. It's like a terrarium, except the plants are edible and there's no soil element involved. Meanwhile, the unfertile salad mix seeds are stagnant and dead. It's time to toss them out. One thing noticeable is that the microgreens growing in Unclear containers where light doesn't shine directly look more yellow-green compared to the microgreens growing in jars. Leaves are more darker green in color. When the sprouts are about an inch or two long, they are ready to harvest and you can eat them. The longer they are, the stronger the flavor. It's the fourth day. The mung beans are packed and growing even more, filling the sprouter. I typically harvest mung bean sprouts around day four. It's just the right length. As you can see, it's much longer and the seed skin are separating easily from the seeds. It's day 5. The mung bean sprouts are peeking out, raising the lid up and crowding the container. The bigger they become, the faster they dry up. So, it is very important to water them twice a day. When the leaves are out, no need to put the cover on. Just make sure they are well hydrated. The mung bean sprouts are much longer on day 5. And look at the lentil sprouts, they are still short. Its growth is slower than mung beans, but they're coming along. The alfalfa sprouts are taller as well. They've reached the top of the sprouter. Meanwhile, the old salad mix seeds have no growth progress. The height of the alfalfa sprouts in the jars are filling halfway through. They look healthy and fresh. Time to extract and harvest the mung bean sprouts. If you use a smaller sprouter, the sprouts grow densely and tight, so be very careful when you pull them out so you don't damage the roots and stems. If you use a sprouter with built-in drain holes, you will see roots sticking out on the underside of the sprouter tray when the beans get longer. It's a little harder for the sprouts to pull out as roots get stuck in the tiny holes. That's why for sprouting mung beans, I usually use a regular basin or a big bowl with a wet towel as a cover and I just drain out water manually every time I water it. So far, it's the most convenient method for me. I don't have to deal with stuck roots. But for smaller seeds like alfalfa, broccoli, cauliflower seeds, they work just fine on sprouter with drain holes. 
because their roots are much smaller and thinner than mung beans. Here's the sprouted mung beans. They look fresh and clean because they are not commercially grown. The next step is the rinsing and the removing of the green skin. If you don't mind the mung bean hulls or the seed skin, it's fine. You can leave it and eat the sprouts with it. It won't harm you and it doesn't have any aftertaste. In fact, it will be an added fiber and some nutrients as well. But if you want your mung bean sprouts free of bean skin, all you need to do is add water and soak the mung bean sprouts in water for about 30 minutes. Swirl it around and the green hulls or the green skin will come off and separate easily. All you have to do is fish out the sprouts. That's it. Mung bean sprouts taste similar to lentil sprouts, but lentil sprouts taste a bit sweet and has more flavor. I like growing them both. Mung beans grow faster and easier compared to lentils. You can eat the mung bean sprouts raw, you can add it to your salad, you can cook it and add it in your soup, you can cook it in your stir fry, spring roll, or add it in your smoothie mix. In the Western countries like the USA, you can buy mung beans at an international markets or Asian stores. I recommend growing mung bean sprouts along with soybeans and other legumes and salad mix seeds. Sprouting is a fun hobby and it's an easy way to grow fresh and healthy greens year-round. You don't need a garden bed to grow microgreens. You can have it growing in your kitchen during winter months. Not only you'll enjoy the health benefits of the microgreens, but also you'll enjoy the satisfying look of the tiny plants growing in your home. But here is one tricky part. You will need plenty of seed supplies to be able to grow microgreens year-round. If you can't afford to grow sprouts year-round, at least do it seasonally, when there is not a lot of fresh produce available. In spring and summer, you can enjoy other green vegetables, as well as grow mung beans, soybeans, alfalfa, broccoli, lentils, and other legumes into full plant maturity, so you will have seeds to harvest and sprout later. It's called sustainability. It requires planning, right motivation, and taking the time and effort to grow what you want to eat so you don't have to buy seeds all the time. I hope this video gives you an inspiration to grow sprouts or microgreens at home. If there's a will, there's a way, as the saying goes. All you need to do is try and try. There will be some oops moments and fun moments as well. They're part of our learning experience. Overall, it's a worthwhile thing to do, to be able to grow your own fresh superfoods. Stay healthy and thanks for watching.